Welcome to SkyTing Live. My name is Chloe. This is Chrissy. We're the co-founders of SkyTing. And this class is brought to you by the NUCO. This is a larger series we're doing on all kinds of different maladies that we might all be experiencing at home. And so for today, we're going to do yoga for skin or yoga for your inner radiance to come through. Um, but two shout out products that we're gonna give for the Muco, they've got two great ones for skin. One is a skin filter, um, which has vitamin C, helps bring you a little more of a brightness to your skin. And then a skin hydrator, which has like aloe and hyaluronic acid and collagen. I actually have been taking a skin hydrator for a few months now, I love it. So those are our recs. Um, but today's class, we're gonna get a little fiery, we're gonna pump some blood, we're going to go upside down a little bit, so it's going to be a little challenging, but you know, play it at your own speed, do what you like, throw out what you don't like, we can't see you, so you do you. To get started, we're going to come onto the hands and knees, just simple tabletop as we often do, and then taking your hands for a flip, wrist forward, fingers back, so starting immediately to work into the wrist joint. And then I want you to just do some baby circles around with the wrist. So little tiny circles going in one direction and then going the other way. So no right or wrong way to do this really, but it's just your opportunity to take a moment opening up that tiny little wrist space. And then from here, you're gonna to start to let those circles feed into your spine moving around. So your hips can circle, your ribs will circle, your head will circle. If you've been doing videos with us for a while now, you know the deal. If you're new to this practice, watch Chrissy if you need a visual reference. If she's not doing Don't look at me, I'm shy. Oh yeah, she's shy. <laughs> And you'll let your breath run through you with this. So if you've been circling just in one direction with these bigger circles, circle the other way, mix it up. If you've got more techniques you want to employ, you can take it however you want. This is just a moment for us to kind of get into our body before we really start to move into bigger, larger poses. Very nice. You're gonna keep your left hand where it is. You're still in tabletop shape. Take your right hand, reach up towards the ceiling, turn your chest open to the right side, and then swing the arm forward and down, hand places forward the normal way. Same thing with the left hand, reach it up, turn your chest, swim the arm forward all the way down and hand the normal way. Again, right arm reaches up towards the ceiling. And then this time as you swim the arm forward, replace the hand with a flipped wrist, wrist forward, fingers back, and then left hand reach up. And then forward with the arm and flip the palm as it comes back down to the floor. One more time on each side, right arm reaches up, Swim forward and fingertips point the normal way and then left arm reaches up. Swim forward and hand the normal way. Very nice from here. Open the chest, arch your back, stick your seat up, tuck the toes underneath you and lifting your knees and hips come right into your first down dog. This is already gonna be a shorter dog. So come forward to a plank pose and give yourself just a simple measure. Shoulders stacked over wrists, legs strong and charging back in space. Find yourself on a central axis, running from the crown of the head through to the base of the seat, from the heels of the feet reaching back to the chest reaching forward. And then your hands are gonna stay where they are, your feet will stay where they are, and just start to hinge at your hips, take a soft bend in both knees, and lift your buttock bones high right back into that dog pose. Let's take a big inhale through our nose, open mouth, exhale, and then release the air out. Good, one more of those, inhaling through your nose. And then open mouth to exhale and release. Very nice, just your right foot. Step it forward a footprint from where it is. Drop the heel down to the floor and then starting to press your right thigh bone back in space and you open up the whole back line of the right leg. Yeah, you'll feel it, it gets a, a little intense for a lot of us real quick in this shape. Still trying to find down dog in the torso so your chest presses back towards that right thigh. And then train it out second side, right foot back, left foot forward, heel reaches down. And the leg doesn't have to go all the way straight, especially because it's early on in practice, but you do start to press the thigh bone back and maybe it's a little more of a lengthening out of the back of that leg. Good, from here, nice and easy. Both feet, walk them forward towards your hands and just be in a forward fold at the top of your mat. Good, your feet can be separated, inner hips distance. You'll put a measure, two fists between the inner arches of the feet as you need. A soft bend in both knees once again as you let yourself hang over the legs. Exactly, Chrissy just did a sigh. You can let out any kind of vocalization that feels good, a little sway of your torso. 
So really for us, like getting the, the shift in circulation is gonna be key for class today so that you get a nice rush of blood to the head so that you feel just an energetic shift from how you've maybe been all day or uh, you know all week, getting your seat lifted high so that there's a moment to drain the, the lower half, the base gets a, a little heavy sometimes. So our opportunity to shift it up, to change up the equation. Keep your knees bent, keep your arms hanging heavy, your head heavy, and real slow start to roll up to stand from here. So your belly can pull into the spine for added support, and then vertebra by vertebra, you stack your way up. Once you're there, head stacked on pop, shoulder roll up, back, and then down. And then arms circle up, back, and down. No, bless the shoulders, circle up, back, and down again. Ah! <laughs> Change pace, hey, hey, hey. I know how to speak English. Okay, from here, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Hook your thumbs above you, lift up, and then tick tock side to side, right to left a few times, just on your own. Doesn't have to be again too formal. Just feeling out through the sides of the waist. Shout out to Danielle Rosati. Tick tock. Tick tock. From here, you're gonna keep your arms reaching up, but undo the hook of your thumbs. With your hands reaching up, start to reach the heels of the hands up towards the ceiling, your fingers point towards the wall behind you, and then magnetize your upper arm bones right alongside the ears with that same kind of wrapping sensation as you would in downward facing dog. So it's like you're trying to spin your armpits in towards your face, and you make more of like a hollowed shape in your armpit as opposed to like the upper arm bone flaring out. From there, you're gonna keep your arms straight. Keep those heels of hands pressing towards the ceiling. And I want you to just gaze at your eye horizon, whatever's out in front of you, and start to lift your heels off the floor so you're pressing through the balls of the feet and your heels start to lift really, really high up off of the ground. Good, drop the heels down with control so it's not a big thud. And then again, pressing through the ball of the foot, especially that big toe ball mind you wanna press firmly down as you reach the heels up and then gently, with control, release your heels down. One more of those. Pressing heels of the hands up, lift up onto the balls of the feet, and then push your hands maybe even a little bit higher. And then letting your heels drop down. Bend into both knees, sit your seat low, come through a chair pose. And then from your torso forward, hands will swing behind your low back, interlace the fingers, and let your arms arc up and overhead. Take a bend of the knees, knuckles back, and then knuckles over to the left side, chest opening to the right for a little twist in this variation. And then back through center, look forward and take your twist over to the left. So just an easy spin of the spine. Good, back through center, release both hands down towards the floor. From here, left foot steps back, right foot stays forward, low lunge on the right side. Tap the back knee down, torso rises up, reach your arms up to the ceiling, and then this variation, let's hold for opposite elbow above our head. Bony elbow point in the center of the palms, and then you lift the chest up like you could open the frame of a window up and let in a fresh breeze. Take a full breath in. Exhale your hands back down to the floor. Tuck your back toes. Lift the back knee. Plank pose. We step it back. Body in one line. Bend your elbows back. Lower straight down to the belly. Come to lie down. From here, it's an easy low cobra shape. Draw your chest up off the floor, roll your upper arm bones back, crown of head lifts, and then release the chest and the forehead back down. Tuck your toes, engage with your legs, lift the knees and thighs in one straight line, high plank, you lift back up. And then seat lifts high towards your downward facing dog. Again, forward to a plank pose, top of a push up. This time, knees tap to the ground first, arch your back, stick your seat up, Bend your elbows back, guide your chest down in between the hands, the chin down to the ground. Keep your knees where they are, slide it through to a low cobra shape, snake the spine, draw your chest up, and then press back this time through hands and knees, tuck toes, hips high to a downward facing dog. The right leg lifts high on the inhale. This time knee bends, heel hangs heavy towards the left seat as you try and open the right hip up to the side. Square it up and re-extend the leg. Reach the heel high, beautiful. Pull the knee forward and lunge the right foot all the way through alongside the thumb. This time be on your fingertips. Open the chest, lengthen out, look forward. Keeping that back left leg supercharged and strong. Fingertips shift forward about a foot, weight into your right leg, and then lift your left leg up to the ceiling. Early standing split, not looking for your most grand standing split, but you'll start to feel that tug of the right leg opening more and then that levity of your left leg lifting high. 
Open the chest, look forward. Feel free if you need to. Blocks can be placed under the hands as you need them. Lift high in the ball of your right foot from here. So that same exercise of lifting the heel off the ground. Keep that right heel lifted like you're in a Jimmy Choo or a Manolo or a La Bhutan. Your choice. Left foot comes down. You're in high heels now in both feet. Keep them lifted. And then heels down. Bend your knees. Sit your seat low. Chair pose. Utkatasana. Very nice. Press into both feet, straight the legs, all the way up to stand, little back bend, and then arms release alongside you. Good. Sweep the arms up, inhale. Good. Exhale, forward fold into your legs, and then open the chest, and we'll take a step back first with the right foot, low lunge on the left side, tapping the back knee down, and then as you're ready, arms lifting up to the ceiling, Opposite, opposite elbow hold, switch the grip of the form that's leading the equation. And then it's just a moment for you to let the pelvis draw forward and lift up. So you're not necessarily just sinking heavy through the lower body. You're trying to find that levity, that lightness, using the upper body to support. Good, hands come down, frame the front foot, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, and then plank pose, you step it back. But this time it's your option, either bending the elbows to hover or bend the elbows to lower onto the belly. Either up dog this time or your cobra shape once again. Hips lift up and back to your downward facing dog. Forward to your plank pose, top of the push up, and then more of that liquid spine, knees to the floor, arch the back, stick your seat up, chest and chin dive forward. Keep knees where they are, slide yourself into your low cobra shape, draw the chest away. And then pressing back through hands and knees, tuck toes, hips high to a downward facing dog. That left leg lifts up and back behind you, and then your knee will bend, your heel hangs towards the seat for a moment just to open up the front of that left hip space. Square it off, free, extend the leg, and then pull the knee in, lunge your foot all the way through alongside the thumb. This time on your fingertips, open the chest, back knee is still lifted, back leg is charging strong, hands can shift forward, float onto your left foot, standing split, this time on the left foot, right leg lifts high. Let your head drop for a second, feel the stability of having one foot firmly planted on the floor, and then we get to let you be a little unstable, open your chest, look forward, add blocks if you want, lift onto the ball of that left foot, lift the heel high, lift the heel high, and then slide your right foot next to the left. And let's say you're in like a crazy, I don't know, like platform high heel now, like you're really high up. And then drop your heels down, bend into both knees, sit your seat low, chair pose, Utkatasana. Come all the way up to stand, little back bend at the top. And then releasing the arms down alongside you. From here, I'll have you separate your feet just about as wide as your inner mat. So, a little bit wider than hips distance, even a little wider than shoulder distance. Take your arms, reach them up towards the ceiling, interlace your fingers, and then release just the pointer finger up towards the ceiling. So you've got like a, a little, I don't know, love beam connecting you to the universe or whatever you want to think of this little pointer finger as. From here, bend it to both knees and take a side <laughs> bend over to the right side. We're going to do what we call an around the world. You're going to tip forward, keep the back in a back bend. So you're going to look out towards the tip of that pointer finger reach. And then you'll go to the left and lift it all the way up to the ceiling and then head on over to the right side again. And then you're going to flip forward into that side bend, scooping over to the left side. And then it's a little back bend as you lift up. You've got one more over to the right. Carve it around, bend your knees, stick your seat out as you reach over to the left, lift it up, take a moment, pause at center, release the arms down alongside you. Very nice, and then bring it back up towards the ceiling, interlace your hands, the second variation. Point your fingers once again, straight up towards the ceiling, and you'll lean over to the left. And you'll carve forward, scoop around, all the way over to the right, and then it's a little back bend on the way up. Two more times, over and around and all the way back up. Beauteous, one more, scoop around, carve some space. Very nice. And then you'll release the arms down. You'll tell your feet back in. Now you can just be hips distance. So from standing, Chrissy will show a measure. You can take one foot, turn it in 90 degrees. Big toe will touch the inner heel of the opposite foot. So you don't have to always just lean down and put your two fists there. Your feet also will give you that measure. Take your arms, reach them up towards the ceiling. Interlace your hands, and then this time we're gonna do that heel of hand flipping up to the ceiling like Chrissy's showing, perfect. Bring your chin up to the ceiling, open that front skin of the throat, take a full breath in, 
As you exhale, start to bend your knees, stick your seat back, and take your knuckles underneath the chin itself, elbows wide to the sides, and you're gonna really try and stretch the front skin of the throat. This time, your chin rests on the interlaced palms like a little cute pedestal vibe. And you'll get to the halfway mark that Chrissy's showing here without letting your knees knock in. Instead, keep the knees tracking in line with the ankles and the hips. Imagine your buttock bones drawing longer back behind you as your chin reaches further out in front of you. And then see if you can lift up off the heels here, both heels lift at the same time so you're on the balls of the feet and you're then just a little bouncy and maybe you let your knees bounce a little bit and you're a little more buoyant. So nice. From here, your chest is gonna make more contact with the thighs. You're gonna take your hands, loop them underneath the heels and then the heels can start to press down to the floor. So it's a hand to heel pose. Elbows try and wrap behind the calves. Head drops heavy, soften the top line of the shoulders because I know some of you out there are lifting those shoulders up to your ears, so do not let that happen. And then once again, your knees trap in line with the hips, with the ankles, so you're not doing a knock knee variation here. Inner knee can still think of wrapping to the outer knee. With all that contact, chest and thighs, armpits towards the knees, face towards the shins, see if you can take a big cycle of breath and let that breath fill up, up against the thighs. And exhale, you'll release. Take your hands out from behind the heels, keep a bend in the knees, let your seat uh, lower just slightly, open the chest and look forward, and then pull your fingertips further out in front of you. As your arms reach long out in front of you, take your hands and reach them off the ground, arms reach forward towards the front wall, and then you'll stay in that half chair pose for a second. Buttock bones widen out to the right and left, and then just the upper body starts to lift as your knees stay bent, chair pose one more time. Good, press into both feet straight and the legs come all the way up, stand a little back, bend gazing up. Arms releasing alongside the body. Good, sweep the arms up, <laughs> inhale. Exhale, dive forward into your legs. We're gonna to start to move. Inhale, look forward, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, plant your palms, either step, step, or lightly hop just to down dog, land with a soft bend in both knees. This time, from down dog, straight through an upward facing dog, you'll skip chaturanga or any of those variations. Just pull your chest forward, and then wave your hips back to a downward facing dog. Take your right leg, lift it up and back behind you. From here, right foot lunges through alongside the thumb. Spin your back heel down, and from the back heel anchoring, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. We'll come in for a warrior one. Hip points are pointing forward. Sternum start to rise up, and then straighten out your front leg. From here, cactus your arms out to the sides, and I want you to take the left arm underneath the right arm, Garudasana wrap. From here, elbows pull forward. You'll start to bend into your right knee, and as your right knee bends, then try and lift your elbows a little higher to the ceiling. Chin can lift up towards the crease of your elbows, and you'll have that essence of a back bend that we look for. Anchor the tail a little heavier, so you let that low back have some space. Take one more cycle of breath in. As you exhale, unwind your hands down to the floor, frame your front foot, lift your back heel up, step your way back to a plank pose, top of a push-up. And then from that plank pose, take your right hand and flip it around. And then take your left hand and flip it around. And then right hand the normal way and left hand the normal way. And from here, you're going to start playing right hand forward, right hand back, left hand forward, left hand back. And just flip your palms like little pancakes on a hot grill. If you need to, knees can tap down to the floor here. Otherwise, knees stay lifted and you get a little more fiery for five, for four, for three, for two. For all the hands the normal way, hips high down, dog. Take a big breath in through your nose, open mouth, exhale, and release it out. Very nice. Left leg lifts up and back on your next breath in. Step the foot all the way forward alongside the thumb. Root through your back heel. Warrior one, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Initially, just to establish where your body is in space, torso is up, legs are in this asymmetrical front knee bent back leg straight, and then straighten the left leg for a moment. Cactus your arms out to the sides, and then let's take the right arm this time underneath the left. Same wrapping, but second side. Pull your elbows forward, start to lift them up. Bend your left knee to 90 degrees. Warrior one, chest will lift. Chin can lift up towards that crease of the elbow. And then anchor strongly to that back leg. Outer back foot presses firmly down. Let's take one more breath in. As you exhale, bring your hands down to the floor. Plant the palms, step back through plank pose. 
And then from here, tuck your knees to the floor. If you've got a block at home, I want you to bring it right underneath the pelvis, where the pelvis would be in an upward facing dog. So it's usually about like eight inches south of your hands. From here, you're gonna place your pubic bone down on that block. You're gonna take your hands, if it's available to you, flip them around, wrist forward, fingers back. If you have a partner that's just been watching you in yoga, you're gonna say, hey, Katna, come over here and sit on my heels. I'm gonna do it for Chrissy because I'm her partner in quarantine. And then you're gonna take a few rounds of chaturanga with your hands flipped. Elbows bend and then elbows extend. Really what this work is, it's working through joint space. You're not gonna be heavy in muscle here. It shouldn't be too taxing on the arms. It is funky if this is your first time doing it. If you find that you can't bend your elbows, it's probably meaning your hands are too far forward and you can bring your hands closer back towards the hips. The block is there as a boundary. Notice that your shoulder is, shouldn't be going lower than the line of the hips. And then you'll do maybe five, maybe 10 rounds when you're done with it, you'll let your knees tap down to the floor, and then I'll let you have a moment in a child's pose. Hands can flip the normal way. Block can be either under the forehead or off to the side. If you want to put your hands back on your feet and just give yourself a moment of grounding, you can. Soften that belly. Turn out. All right. Woo, I'm sweating. Okay, let's come back to all fours, hands and knees. Sweating is good for your skin. Tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back to downward facing duck. So it's a good thing if you're like me and you're a little tired from all that chaturanga stuff. Feet are gonna come together. We're gonna kick it up a notch again. You're gonna walk your feet in a little bit, two inches. We're gonna do some donkey kicks. So what you'll do is bend your knees, look forward to your hands like you're gonna pounce, and then you're gonna actually pounce. You're gonna jump up, kick your butt, and land back down. We're gonna do 10 of these, so do it on your own. You wanna stack your hips over your shoulders. And you might find a little bit of levity and hang time where your bones are stacked and it's actually nice. You can feel like you're floating up. The last one, you're gonna land in Malasana with your feet wide outside of your hands at the top of the mat, hands to a prayer and heart center, and then just chill out in Malasana. Catch your breath, smile wipe your sweat. Good. All right, so from here, let's take the right arm on a diagonal in front of the right knee and the left arm up for a twist. Turn and look up at the left hand and you're going to reach the left arm up and over your ear on a long diagonal to the top right corner of your room wherever you're practicing and keep turning your heart up towards the sky. Good. Come back to center, lifting your chest, hands to a prayer and switch left shoulder on the inside. Right arm reaches up towards the ceiling, and then do that long diagonal reach, right arm up and over your ear. Turn your chest up towards the sky. Feel the sides of your waist get longer. And then come back to center, hands to a prayer, hands to the floor. Lift your hips up, toe heel your feet parallel, hips distance apart, bend your knees, sit back, chair pose, Utkatasana, just for fun. Stand all the way up and release your arms down. So we're gonna do a little shake out. Some of you will feel dumb doing this, but you'll get over yourself really quickly. It's fun and it's good for your lymphatic system and your bloodstream. So all you're gonna do is start to jump around and shake your arms and shake your legs and shake your head and shake your hands and do something that looks ridiculous. No one can see you. Lucky for you guys, you can make fun of us, but we can't make fun of you. Unless you post about us on Instagram after, and then we can laugh with you. Yeah. Laugh with you. Yeah, please post yourself doing a shake out. Okay, let's go for another 10. Go faster. Nine, go faster. Eight, go faster. Ah! Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Land at the top of your mat. Release your arms down, settle. So uh, whenever I do something like that, it feels like a snow globe. You shake and then you land in Tadasana and you let yourself settle and receive and ground. So just ground into that. Feel yourself rooting into the floor, spread the toes out. One more breath, mostly so I can catch my breath. Inhale and exhale out. Sweep the arms up, inhale, reach, look up, stretch, grow tall, exhale. Fold forward over your legs, Uttanasana. 
Lengthen your waist with forward breathing. Step, step, or hop back, downward facing dog as you breathe out. From here, right leg lifts up and back. Step your right foot forward to a lunge. This time, spin the back foot down to 45 degrees. Windmill open to warrior two. And I want you to take a long stance in warrior two. Glide the front knee deeply to 90 degrees until this knee is over the heel. Reach through your arms and think about the skin of your arms reaching longer. Reach up through the top of your head. Drop down through the tailbone. Keep gliding your front knee deeper. Keep pressing through your back heel for three. Good, it's a very powerful, strong stance. Two. And one. Straighten the front leg, reverse triangle. Reach up and back, get long. Exhale, windmill your hands down to the floor. Step back, plank position. Glue your legs together, zip them up, roll to the left hand, stack your feet, side plank, whoops, sorry, gotta throw it in. Lift your hips up higher, you can always modify this. Take the top arm, reach it up and over your ear, and let's actually cradle the back of our skull with that right hand. Lean your head back into the hand, lift the right elbow up towards the ceiling, lift out of the bottom shoulder, let's take one more deep breath in. Exhale, hands down to the floor. Let's take the knees down to the floor. Child's pose, sit back on your heels. Interlace your hands behind your lower back and you're gonna roll forward onto the top of the head, right where you would place the head for headstand. Reaching the arms up, lifting your hips up, and you can actually round your spine. If you wanna do what Chloe's doing and rock a little side to side on your head, you're just trying to stimulate the top of your skull and get the blood to go into your brain. Release your hips down on your heels, reach your arms forward, shift up onto all fours, tuck the toes, downward facing dog, hips high, wash it forward, waving through an up dog, breathe in. If you want to, a secret chaturanga as you breathe out, back to your up dog as you breathe in, downward facing dog as you breathe out. But you guys know you can always skip chaturanga. We do not care. We do it all the time. Left leg up and back. Breathe in. Step it forward. Spin the back foot down. Windmill your arms open to warrior two. And make it a powerful, long, confident stance. So you're driving your front leg. You're going into battle. You're vigilant. Your arms are reaching. And then you just commit to being here. It's not long. These poses are temporary. This one's uncomfortable for me to stay in. I always want to like fidget around, but see if you can just stay, breathe, deal. One more breath. Straighten your front leg, reach up and back, reverse triangle, get spacious. Exhale, windmill down, hands to the floor. Step to plank, zip the legs. Roll to the right hand, outside edge of the right foot. Lift the left arm up, lift your hips up. And then take that top arm up and over your ear, maybe cradle the skull, looking up towards the ceiling, leaning your head back. Think about doing like a, a up dog in your chest here. One more breath in. Exhale, hands to the floor, knees down to the floor, child's pose, seat back. Interlace your hands behind your lower back, swap the interlacing and roll forward to the top of the head. Reaching the arms up overhead, getting that stimulation again. I'm still out of breath from my shake out. <laughs> That's bad. All right, sit back on your feet, release your arms, and then let's come to Virasana. And if you have something to sit on at home, please sit on something so your hips are higher than your knees. You never want your knees to hurt in yoga, and you never want to sit on your tail in yoga. You want to take that rounding out of your lower back. All right. We're gonna do Kapalabhati, Sky Team Classic, favorite exercise. Short, sharp exhalation through the nose. Lips stay sealed the whole time. So, arms are gonna go up because when the arms are up, it helps to clear the lungs and it also helps to pump the heart a little harder. The heart has to work a little more, so it's going to be a really energizing, vigorous, good for your bloodstream. Um, type of exercise that we do. So we're gonna do a hundred pumps of Kapalabhati. Your hands are shaped like open cups. We call them tiny cups. Catch whatever grace you wanna catch above you. There's so many good things that can rain above us from the universe at any time. So be ready. Close your eyes. Take a breath in. 
And here we go, begin pumping the breath out, 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 out. So it's short and snappy. It's very quick, especially today when we're doing an energizing class. Last week we gave you a restorative class, so this week we gotta pump up the energy. Pump out your lungs, remove that CO2, remove stagnant energy, remove stagnant thoughts. You can do that imaginatively as you're pumping the breath out, so your mind has something to do. I'll keep count for you, so you can just keep going. Keep going, keep pumping, keep exhaling your breath. We're almost there, keep it going. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take a deep breath in, hook your thumbs above you. Try to take three more sips in. Hold, hold, hold. And then like a pressurized champagne bottle popping. Exhale, release the arms. Palms face up in your lap, eyes stay closed. Take a full breath in. And a full breath out. Notice how you feel. Again, let that settle like a snow globe that was shaken really vigorously. Let that land in your body. You have to do a lot of things to be in your body. Um, with ease. It takes a lot of doing to feel the grace of being in a body. Okay, so we're going to come into a headstand. If you have a wall space at home, I highly recommend you use it, especially if you're newer to headstand. You're going to double up your mat if you're taking headstands. So you can do that now. And if you're like, oh, I totally don't want to do headstand. I'm, that's dangerous. I don't want to. Please don't do headstand. And instead, do a wide-legged fold like this. Proserita stance. Crown of the head on a block, two blocks, or the floor. So you're still getting the benefits of going upside down and getting grounding in your skull. Otherwise, if you're taking headstand, you'll interlace your hands, make a triangular base. Press the wrists down, press the forearms down, tuck your toes, put the crown of the head down on the floor, wrap your hands around your skull, tuck your toes, lift your hips, walk your feet up towards your face. Feel like when the toes get a little weightless, you can bring your heels to your seat in an egg shape and then unfurl like a vine lifting up towards the sun. You lift up in towards headstand. So. This is a really good pose. We talked about the benefits of going upside down. So even if you're not in headstand and you're in that other version, still getting those same benefits. If you're up, really press through the forearms, squeeze your legs, lift up through the inner heels. If you're using a wall, good for you. Try balancing maybe a few inches away from the wall. Keep pressing through the floor with the wrists. And then know that headstand's a process. Chloe and I, it took us a long time to get headstand and it's something gradual. So at first you stay a few breaths, but if you want to stay longer um, and can, we recommend 10 minutes a day. <laughs> um, I'm not up to that point yet. I'm at five minutes, but that's my goal when I'm 90 or 75 like our teacher is. Okay, a few more breaths here. And then knees into your chest. You're going to take a child's pose coming down gracefully. And in child's pose, you can do that little bored teenager child's pose with your hands cupping your chin. That's nice to do after headstand. If you are in proserita, you can come to child's pose as well. We'll all take a few breaths here. You have to do something like child's pose after headstand to absorb it and make sure you're ready for the next thing and you don't do, you don't go into it too fast. Man, I miss teaching a live audience. <laughs> what are you doing about? I'm all right. Chloe's live audience. I, I love teaching Chloe. It's like a mannequin. She has to do whatever I say. Normally, if she was in my class, she'd be doing her own thing. That's true. I'm not a good listener. We, no yoga teacher is a good listener in another yoga teacher's class, unless it's like I get in dark or right. you get in trouble. All right, let's come up to sit and then open up your mat if it was folded. 
we got to bring it down a notch. So I think I'll show, um, we're going to come into a fish pose with a block. So I'm going to show it facing this way so you guys can see my block. So um, I'm going to do it with straight legs. The block is going to go horizontally behind my bra line, behind my heart. And then the crown of the head goes to the floor. And I do that eagle wrapped arm position we did with Chloe earlier. Right hand goes around the left wrist. Left hand is a pancake and it finds the floor. And then you flip your chin to that top shoulder side. If you know soup to virasana and want to make your legs go into virasana, do that if that's in your practice, like Chloe's showing. So the her bra line's on the block. The block could go medium height. It can even go low height if it's too high for you on the medium. And then you'll wrap the arms in an eagle position. In whatever arm's the top arm, you flip your chin to that side. So again, you're stretching out this place of the body that doesn't normally get stretched out, the neck, the throat, the um, skin care people in the world call the decolletage, the second face. And then your hands are your third face, so you want to protect that. Breathing in and out. It's a soothing type of breath we do in this pose, like an oceanic breath, if you know ujjayi, engage ujjayi. And then you can flip your arms, switch the hook, switch the wrapping the other way, and then switch your chin the other way. And make sure you're swallowing your spit a few times so you flush out the thyroid gland. That's a nice little trick. It's especially good right now to, you know, just support your immune system. Even just thinking about your organs and glands, I think, is beneficial. When do we do that during our day? And it starts in the imagination, our, our dialogue and... Um, just like knowingness of what's inside ourselves. All right, let's unwrap the arms. Use your elbows to help you slowly tuck the chin into your chest and come up from that. You can move your block off to the side. And then if you were in Virasana like Chloe, you'll definitely want to do something where you extend the legs, like plank or down dog. So I'll give you a few seconds to do that. And then everybody's gonna come to lie facing down on the belly. So bend the elbows from plank and lower down. Let's take a few rolling cobras with the hands wide off the mat, elbows up. Inhale, lift the chest up, legs stay down, unfurl the spine, exhale, lower down. So just some moving back bends, two more on your own with your breath. Inhale, you rise, exhale, you lower. Legs stay long, pelvis stays down, pubic bone stays down, and then exhale, lower. After that one, flip around onto your back. We're gonna do one more back bend and one more hard pose, and then we'll call it a day. So you can do it, we're doing full wheel. If you're not doing full wheel and you know, oh, I don't wanna try that, you do a supported bridge pose with a block under your lower back on um, any level you want. Otherwise, full wheel, hands up by your ears, elbows in. You're going to press down through the hands and feet. Come to the crown of the head first. Once you're on the crown of the head, draw your elbows in again, and then press down, lift up into full wheel. And we're going to do a few more full wheels, so this first one doesn't have to be your craziest. So take a few pulses, breathe a few breaths, and then chin to chest and come down. And no counter pose, just lie down. Just keep your feet down, keep your knees up towards the ceiling, but don't uh, lift your feet off the floor. Second round, we're going to do three. So round two, hands by your ears, elbows in, press down. This time you can lift straight up. You can skip the crown of the head part, go straight up. You can pulse the chest again. Maybe this time you want to rise up onto the balls of the feet and pulse the chest. You can do something like that and then chin to chest and lower down. Our teacher does 10 wheels a day and she's probably older than you. So if that's any inspiration for this last one, the last one you do, you can take any variations you want. You can lift a leg, you can lift an arm, <laughs> press, you can lift two legs, press down, lift up, five breaths. 
If you were Christopher, he would flip it. He would do a little TikTok. Chloe's lifting a leg. Otherwise, you're still in that bridge pose. That's perfectly fine. We're almost done. And then chin to chest, you lower down. Yay, good job. Do what Chloe's doing. Knees in, grab your, um, hug yourself. <laughs> grab your shoulders. I wonder if Alex Trolls is practicing with us today. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about him when we were doing the meal. Alex. Front beautiful row, practice. Beautiful practice. Miss all of our students so much. Mm -hmm. So from here, if you have time, you can slip into Shavasana. Otherwise, you can take Shavasana later on today, maybe tonight in your bed. <laughs> We're going to roll to the right side and instead of Shavasana, come up to a meditative seat. And we'll sit quietly for a minute together. If you have a meditation practice, now's a good time to just go right into it. Um, or put on a Sky Ting TV meditation video. We've been doing those, those are fun. Otherwise, a minute in silence or in gratitude or in dedication or devotion sending your good energy to someone else or something else or some place in the world or the whole world or Mother Earth, whatever speaks to you. And then all together, bring your hands to your heart and take a full breath in. You guys so much. So much day. We miss you. We love you. This class will be on Sky Ting TV. Um, so if you want to practice and do it again, you can. Thank you to the new co. We'll see, you know, another class, another malady we'll address next week. And what else? What else? I don't know. DM us if you have any requests for class. We'll listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be good wherever you are in the world.